Good afternoon. Welcome to this week's convocation virtually from Monte Vista Grove Homes, sponsored by the resident executive organization and um, also co sponsored by San Marino Community Church, which uh, provides our technical assistance and Andrew Crump. I am delighted for you to be um, with us this afternoon. It's a special program on what's called Easter Thursday. And um, our text for today comes at the suggestion of our speaker singer, Jennifer Miller Hamill. And it is from uh, six verses from Psalm 40 which uh, you will see on your screen. So listen for God's word to us from Psalm 40, verses one through three and nine through 11. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, Lord. I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Do not, O oh Lord, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do thank you and praise you that you call us into relationship with you and call us to be Easter people. We thank you that Easter Resurrection Day is not just one day, but it is the whole season of Eastertide and that every Sunday, we celebrate your resurrection. Gracious God, we feel so often that we are in the miry bog in our world. And so we ask that you would be lifting our world out of the miry bog and setting us on the rock and making our steps secure. We particularly lift up those who continue to struggle with COVID and for those many in Ukraine, as well as Ethiopia, Afghanistan, Haiti, and so many other places, Lord, that need your help. Help us as people of faith to reach out and offer a helping hand. Now, Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you give us that lead us to you and bring beauty into our world. We thank you for the gift of scripture, of course, and of the, for the gift of music. Thank you for bringing Jennifer to us today. And we ask that you would give us ears to hear and that our hearts might rejoice. In Jesus' name, amen. It's my pleasure to introduce Jennifer Hamill, Jennifer Miller Hamill, who actually uh, started at the San Marino Community Church right around the time I did, um, late 2007, 2008, and she is still there as one of the much appreciated and beloved soloists. But she has been performing vocally and as a pianist for 20 years. Initially uh, with the St. Mary's College of Maryland Jazz Ensemble, 
where she did her Bachelor of Arts degree in music, after which she went to the renowned Westminster Choir College in Princeton, New Jersey, and majored in voice performance and pedagogy. And much has been printed about her various uh, accomplishments, but let me read you some of the things that she's done that have not been in print for you. Her career highlights include being Marguerite in Gounod's Faust, the mother in Amal and the Night Visitors, a mother also in Ragtime, a woman in the Songs for the New World, and she is someone that has been and is a champion for what's called new opera. And so she, as that, she has appeared in the world premieres of Kenneth Wells' The First Lady and The Center Cannot Hold. She can be heard on the soundtracks to Riot Games League of Legends and Tryon World's online role-playing game, which is called Rifts. Plains of Tellara or Tellara from Fallout and Dragon Age composer Ian Zur. She is also a frequent collaborator with indie recording artist Todd Zero, and their work can be heard on iTunes and Spotify. She has, in addition to all of that performance, shifted her vocal talents from the opera stage, as well as continuing at church, to the radio booth, and she's going to talk with us about that journey. And although it said that she would be singing one piece a cappella, that has changed. And we're going to be hearing uh, a number of uh, short pieces that are accompanied and are by video. So, Jennifer, thank you for being with us and welcome. We're all ears. Oh, thank you so much. It's so wonderful to be here. And I see several familiar faces, including Dr. Manning. Hello. Um, but it was such a wonderful, wonderful thing to be asked to share with so many of you today about what I've been doing vocally, because when you talk about taking the road less traveled to get to where I am today, I definitely had quite a winding road. So in order for me to do that, I thought the best way, um, being a visual person, um, I made a presentation with lots of fun pictures and little bits about me to share with you all. So um, hopefully everything will go well. We won't have any technical problems, but I'll go ahead and screen share so we can do that. Just one second get that going. All right. So let me know, can everyone see, see the presentation? Are we good? All right. So I am going to, there we go. All right. So I'm going to collapse my screens a little bit so that way I can see the presentation. But uh, yeah, so this is just a little bit about me. This is probably me in three pictures right here, uh, being a radio host from my home studio, which you see me in right now. Um, as an elegant soprano, that's from a rehearsal that I had with Opera Santa Barbara. They made me one of the elegant members of the cast. And then uh, when we say classically trained, um, yes, I am a classically trained musician. I am also a classically trained video gamer as well. And we'll learn a little bit more about that in just a bit. But there's, yeah, there's lots to me. So to get started... So this is just a little bit um, about me in my in my very, very early days. Um, that's me with my mom there on the left. You definitely tell who I favor, right? Um, and then with my dad, probably about, oh, a year or so, two years later. Um, from an early age, I always wanted to be a performer. I knew that I wanted to get up in front of people and uh, put on a costume and, and sing and do things. And this is a little picture of me from when I was about three years old, I would think. I decided to go as Annie because that was the big movie at the time. And Sears was selling the dress and the wig and you could do the whole thing. So I did. And of course, my parents decided to put it in my senior yearbook when I graduated just to, you know, <laughs> embarrass me a little bit, I think. Um, the picture over here on the right is of me with my sister. And that's probably like 
1988, 89, but Pee Wee's Playhouse was the big thing, of course, at the time. So I was a big fan of it, as was my sister. Some just photos over the years with my folks. Uh, my parents love to come and visit me out in California, so I like to take them lots of fun places. We've done the Warner Brothers tour. We've been to Disneyland. Uh, down here on the bottom is just a Easter egg hunting with my cousin. And then down there, I'm with one of my favorite toys, Kermit the Frog. I love the Muppets. Um, and that's my grandfather there on the, on the left. So growing up in a Navy family, um, I got to move around quite a bit. I got to see a lot. And I think this definitely um, helped me do what I do today in that I feel very comfortable meeting people and talking to people because I was always the new kid at school. We would move about every two and a half, three years. And I was born in Virginia Beach. Um, and we lived there several times over the course. I ended up graduating from high school in Virginia Beach as well. But we also lived in Bayonne, New Jersey, um, Gaithersburg, Maryland, when my dad was stationed at the Pentagon. Um, I lived in Portsmouth, Rhode Island, which is near Newport. If you've ever been there, it's a lovely place. And I absolutely loved living there. And then Goose Creek, South Carolina, which is near Charleston. It's this very, <laughs> it's this lovely place. It's very much out in the middle of nowhere, but, um, it was a different, it was a very different living experience down there versus we went from New England to South Carolina. So it was a very different, uh, experience. As Karen said um, earlier, I did my undergraduate degree at St. Mary's College of Maryland, which is a little, um, it used to be an Episcopal women's seminary, actually. Um, and it went public in the 60s, if I remember correctly, but it's now a co-ed um, state school in Maryland. Um, and I went there and I got a BA in music. I almost did a double major in English and journalism, which actually would have really helped with what I'm doing now, but I got close enough. Didn't, I would have had to have stayed a fifth year, essentially, if I wanted to get both degrees. Um, but I loved going to school there. It's such a beautiful place as you can see from, this is pretty much the entire campus right there. It's tiny. And that building right there, if you can see my cursor, um, that's where I lived my freshman year. So I woke up and I got to look out this window and see this gorgeous lake and this amazing river right here. It was awesome. Um, and then for my master's degree, I took a year off and tried to figure out what I wanted to do if I wanted to continue to pursue vocal performance or if I wanted to go into something else and maybe just get a job. And I said, no, I really, I'm feeling the pull to go back to school and, and do more. And so on a lark, I had a friend who said, um, well, why don't you, it's actually my, um, my church music director at the Methodist church I was going to at the time. She said, well, I went to Westminster for my master's degree. Why don't you take a look and see if it's a place you would like to go to? And, um, I sent in an application just very much last minute because, of course, you know, school starts in the fall. I think I applied in March, <laughs> did my audition about two weeks later, found out that afternoon they wanted me. So they, she gave me a call like almost as soon as I got back to my hotel and she said, we would absolutely love to have you with our fall class. Would you please come? And so in a matter of about two months, I suddenly was getting ready to go off to Princeton, New Jersey and do a master's degree. Um, I, I very much took my time when I was there. I think most master's degrees you can do in about two years. I ended up doing mine in about three and a half. And the thing that actually held me up was that I needed to take a German class. And I ended up doing that at a community college in Virginia. So I did my graduation by walking across my parents' dining room. But I do have my master's degree from Westminster and it was an absolute blast. We got to perform with the New York Philharmonic, with the New Jersey Symphony, with Philadelphia Orchestra. I got to sing at Lincoln Center, which was really cool. I even got to go on a tour with Julie Andrews and Christopher Plummer um, when my, my first year there. They hired a bunch of us to do this tour through Canada and uh, parts of the U.S., basically singing Christmas music with them in these big arenas, and it was amazing. And Christopher Plummer was an absolute joy to work with. I will say that. So I was very, very sad that he's uh, no longer with us, but he was great. And of course, Julie Andrews is as wonderful as you think she would be. So after I finished my master's degree, I went back to Virginia and um, I worked at Old Dominion University uh, in Southeastern Virginia doing admissions work. 
And I was teaching voice and I was uh, singing at First Presbyterian of Norfolk. Um, and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I was like, I still want to sing, but there, there weren't a lot of opportunities for me to get on a stage in that part of Virginia. There is a, a pretty decent opera company there, but I felt like I wanted to do more. I really wanted to work in a studio, <laughs> which is funny considering what I do now for a living. But I, I really wanted to get into recording studios. I wanted to sing on movie soundtracks and television and video games. And I said, well, I'm not gonna be able to do that here, but I could do it in Southern California. So after about two years of living back in Virginia, I decided to take the risk. I got a job at Pomona College working in their music department, and I moved to L.A. And um, it was it was one of those huge just you know, in football. We talk about the Hail Mary pass. Right. But it definitely was like a Hail Mary pass. I just threw that football and I said, I'm going to go and I'm going to see what happens. And so I moved out here. Um, I very quickly got involved with a lot of the performing organizations in the area. Um, one of the best ways actually to get involved singing in Southern California when you first move here is to get hired by one of those Christmas caroling companies that you see all over the place that sing in malls and at parties. And so I did that and I got to know a lot of people. Um, I ended up being able to work with such organizations as uh, Long Beach Opera, Opera Santa Barbara. Um, Celestial Opera, which is the group I, I got to sing Marguerite with, that's me up there doing Marguerite with um, Omar Crook, who sings with LA Opera Chorus. Um, he was my Faust. Um, and these are just some highlights. This is my giant wig that I wore when I was in Traviata for Opera Santa Barbara. Um, Peter Green, who is our music director at San Marino now, hired me about 10 years ago to be the soloist for his production of Carmina Burana. So that's me being the soloist down there. And this was when we did Nixon in China at Long Beach Opera. I am right there in the middle, tiny in that group of people wearing army fatigues. Uh, some other highlights that I've done over the years, um, I got hired to be Butterfly uh, for a Madam Butterfly up in Santa Barbara. So that's me and my very, I, I don't think I've had fancier makeup ever for a performance. And this was a really neat art performance that I did about six years ago and and i point to this picture because this is supposed to be a wedding dress and it's made out of newspaper and these are rubber gloves now if you remember at the beginning of covid how difficult it was to find rubber gloves i probably could have sold this dress for a million dollars i i jest but it was probably quite valuable um and then over here, uh, this is from a Christmas Eve service actually at San Marino um, several years ago with the Virginia Road Band. I sang in a contemporary worship service there. So if you'd like to hear a little bit of uh, what I've done uh, classically, um, and as Karen said, I decided to embed some videos into this presentation just to better represent uh, what I do. Uh, this is from a recital that I gave at First United Methodist of Pasadena probably about six years ago. Um, and these are the uh, final, it's like the final minute of a, an art song by Hugo Wolf called Ferdborgenheit. So that's a little bit of what I do. It's in German, by the way. The song, the, the poem basically is talking about concealing a love from somebody. Um, even though it hurts to do it, it's better in the end for the situation between um, the narrator and then the object of their affection. 
So on top of being a classical singer, um, as I said earlier, my other goal when I came to LA was that I wanted to get involved in music on the pop culture side. I wanted to be able to record for video games, for television, for movies. Um, I am happy to say I've been able to do all three <laughs> on certain levels. Uh, even though I am not a member of the LA Master Chorale, I am not a member of LA Opera Chorus, um, I have been able to do these things uh, just in other ways. Um, these are some highlights of things that I've done um, over the years. I've sung in several of the video games live concerts. In fact, they live streamed one of them and you can see my head right there from the live stream. Um, I've done some work as a guitarist and a songwriter here in town. Um, and these are some shots from some recording sessions I've done. The one here where you can see the Warner Brothers Tower um, in the background, I was hired to sing on a video game, the League of Legends video game that Karen referred to. Um, I couldn't take any pictures inside the scoring stage, unfortunately. Um, and down here, I was hired to sing backup vocals um, on a rock album uh, by the band Dream Theater. They're like a big like art rock uh, group. But um, and the album ended up winning a Grammy, actually, I found out later on. Uh, I did not get my Grammy certificate, sadly, but uh, yeah, it did win a Grammy, which was cool. So uh, the other side of my voice, my voice definitely has three sides. So uh, I'll let you hear a little bit of what I do as a non-classical singer. Um, on top of singing at San Marino Church, I'm also invited uh, frequently to be a guest soloist at the Founders Church uh, in Koreatown. And what I love about singing there, um, it, they have um, three uh, really wonderful studio musicians that play there. And it's like going in and singing in a Broadway show when I get to work there. So um, this is me singing Home from the Wiz.
so you know something else <laughs> Uh, and as Karen said, uh, I first met Karen when I started singing at San Marino Community Church, and I've been there since February of 2008. That was my first official service um, as a soloist there. So yeah, 14 years. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, but I have to say it has been such a spiritually fulfilling uh experience for me and um, musically fulfilling. Uh, as you can see, it's lots of goofy pictures with my colleagues who are very, very dear friends. In fact, the picture up in the top left is from this past Sunday uh, at Easter. So it was, um, it has been such an incredible experience uh, singing uh, for Glenda Lang and now singing for Peter Green, uh, getting to work with Lisa Edwards, getting to work with the fantastic pastoral staff there. Um, it feels like home, uh, it, like I was singing in the previous song. It definitely feels like going home for me uh, when I go to work there every single day. Um, so a little something from that, and you were actually going to get uh, a guest appearance here from my colleague, Jessica Rao. Um, this is us doing a duet for the live stream uh, probably about a year ago, I think. And uh, as you can see, it's How Can I Keep From Singing? And you'll see Lisa Edwards, too, playing the piano. My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I hear the real, the far-off hymn That hails a new creation No storm can shake Thank you. 
Isn't Lisa amazing? And Jessica. That's so much fun. Uh, just another really quick thing about me. I love Halloween. It's probably because I wear a lot of costumes when I get to perform. But these are just some highlights of my Halloween-ness. Uh, I also, of course, you've probably figured I love being a pop culture nerd. I love the Muppets. I love Star Wars. I love Star Trek. I love Ghostbusters. I love going to conventions just a little bit. Uh, I even got my dad to play a really cool uh, racing game with me where we got to sit in these really cool racing chairs. And it feels like you're actually driving the car, which was pretty neat. And I love Disneyland. I go there as often as is reasonable. I don't want to say as often as I could, but I go there as often as is reasonable. Um, I love the Main Street Electrical Parade too, and I'm really glad that it's back. So hopefully I'll get there soon and see it. And my husband. I love my husband. He's a goof. I've, I've known him for a very, very long time. We met in high school, actually in 1995. Um, we did not date that entire time. We actually were out of touch for several years and got reacquainted on Facebook. And we started dating long distance about 10 years ago. And I finally convinced him to move out here in 2016. Uh, we got engaged right after the pandemic lockdown. Actually, that was not his plan, um, but it just happened to work out that way. And we got married at San Marino last fall. Actually had a nice little wedding in the courtyard there. It was a perfect day. Perfect, perfect day. So seeing all this, how did I go from being a singer pretty full time? Actually, I had a lot of small gigs that made a very full time job to then working in radio. How do you get there? Well, in 2009, I was unemployed. Uh, the job that I had at Pomona College when I moved out here was only for one year. And then I took a job at a, at a foundation, at a nonprofit in Glendale. And then unfortunately, I was laid off. Um, so in early 2009, I had a phone call from my temp agency. And I looked at my cell phone and I didn't want to pick it up because I was also rehearsing a show at the time. And I was like, oh, I could really use the day to work on my music and really get this memorized for the rehearsal that I had that night. But then something was saying, no, Jennifer, pick up the phone. You really need to pick up the phone because this could be something. So I did. And if you've ever seen the Gwyneth Paltrow movie, Sliding Doors, where she either gets into the subway car and then she misses it, and her life goes in two very different directions, I felt like that was my sliding doors moment. If I had not picked up the phone that morning, if I had just decided to sleep in and rehearse my music, my life would be very different in some ways than it is today. Um, the phone call from the temp agency was for a one day position working the front desk at KPCC, which is the NPR station, um, if you're not familiar. Uh, they are based in Pasadena. Um, and I went in for that one day job. And as soon as I walked through the doors of the station, um, something felt right about being there. I, I can't completely describe it, but I walked in and there was just something about the feeling of the people who worked there and what they were doing and their mission that said to me, I, I was really sad I only had one day. <laughs> And um, that one day ended up turning into a much longer temp position, which then turned into an internship, which turned into a part-time job, which turned into a full-time job. Um, I was hired full-time in 2011. Uh, I uh, worked in what they call in broadcast traffic. So essentially what you do uh, in traffic, it's not, it's, unfortunately, it's not as cool as getting up in the helicopter and flying around and giving traffic reports about what's going on in the 110. That would have been really neat. Um, but what traffic is in broadcast is uh, I made the broadcast schedule for the entire day. So not just the programming that you heard, um, you know, Air Talk and Pat Morrison and all that, but also um, the promos and the underwriting spots. You know, the KPCC supporters are from, you know, with LA Phil, um, all the pro and, and the emergency alert tests that make those really annoying noises. I scheduled those as well. Um, and I ended up doing that. I worked at KPCC for almost 10 years, actually. And it went by like that, I have to say, because there was never a boring day at KPCC. Even though my immediate job wasn't the most stimulating, um, the fact that we got to do so many amazing things from day to day. We had so many amazing guests coming in from day to day. Um, you can probably see down there in the bottom right, I got to meet Sir Patrick Stewart, um, which if you saw from my earlier slide, I've 
am a huge Star Trek fan and that was a red letter day for me. Um, but I, I loved my time there. I made so many incredible friends, did so many goofy things. I even got a picture of John Raby singing out of one of my opera scores down there. Um, but I, I loved it there. And, but I got to a point where they had asked me to start doing a uh, voiceover work. Um, and I, uh, was recording spots for them for the LA Phil and the master corral and the opera, because I knew how to say those names. Cause that's what my education background was in. And they were asking me to host membership drives. Um, and I had a producer tell me that he's like, you just really have a, a natural knack for live radio. You just know how to do this. And up until that point, I never considered myself even to be someone who could do it. I didn't know that I had a nice speaking voice. I know. Um, <laughs> it was just not, it's something you don't realize you can do until someone tells you. And so when a position came open for a host at KPCC, I applied for it because I wanted to be on the air. And unfortunately, with the culture at KPCC, um, and I'm not speaking ill of them when I say this, when they peg you as being one particular kind of talent, it's very difficult for them to see you another way. So it was very difficult for them to see me as going from being someone who was very much behind the scenes to then suddenly being on the air. And so it never really quite worked out for me there. But I knew that I wanted to continue that path. I knew I wanted to get on the air somehow. Um, so one day I was, I was driving into work at KPCC and, and the news was a bit much. And so I decided to switch over to the classical station to 91.5 KUSC. And I said, well, you know, maybe there's a job for me over there. Maybe they've got a job working traffic for them. That would be a great way for me to get in the door over there. I already know how to do it. So, and this is terrible, I got into my job and I go on my work computer and I start looking for jobs at another radio station. <laughs> so when I went on KUSC's website, um, I didn't see a position for traffic, but they did have an open position for a host. And I said, well, and I kept thinking of that Hail Mary pass that I talked about earlier when I moved to California. Do I throw that football again? I was like, why not? I have stuff that I've done at KPCC. I can put together what they call a reel. I can send in my, you know, examples of what I can do. I had support from a couple of the hosts at KPCC. And I said, and it's a radio station that deals with something I do professionally every day, which is perform classical music. So I did it. <laughs> and well, let's see here. So as you can see, uh, it worked out. <laughs> I, um, I sent in my stuff and I had an interview. I had a couple of interviews with John Vandereel, uh, who is uh, now the overnight host there. And uh, they offered me a very, very part-time position initially, just hosting one of their overnight shifts. And um, again, they kept growing my responsibilities over there. And uh, at the end of 2018, they offered me a full-time position as a host at KUSC. And the day that <laughs> the day that they offered me that position, I had to pinch myself. I, I didn't believe it was actually happening. Um, so it was um, it has changed my life and and I have to thank um, I have to thank, the powers that be at KUSC over and over and over again for giving me that opportunity for trusting someone who had had very little experience as a radio host up until that point to suddenly say, hey, we're going to give you all this responsibility now. Come on board. So not only did I get to come on board as a host at KUSC, but then I was also simulcasting uh, with our sister station, KDFC, in San Francisco. So for a while, I was actually hosting in the L.A. and the San Francisco market in the morning, which was very, it was such an honor to, uh, to have that. So since starting there, I've been able to do so many amazing things. Um, that's from our kids discovery day at the natural history museum. Uh, that's Brian Lortz in there on the right. And we're interviewing, uh, 
oh gosh, I don't remember who that was anymore. That's terrible of me. I'm sorry. Um, and down here, this is from one of our LA Phil broadcasts. It's Brian and Alan Chapman and Gail Eichenthal up there, the four of us. And then this is from uh, an event that I got to do with several members of the LA Master Chorale. We had them come and sing at Compton Avenue School. Um, and I got to be there as a representative for KUSC, which was great. I was there with my friends, um, being able to bring this beautiful classical music to kids who had probably never heard it sung live before ever. And that was just an amazing opportunity. So um, here's a little bit of what I do at the station every day. Hello, what's up? It's Brian. And Jennifer. We're coming to you from the studio during the second to last day of our membership drive. And we just wanted to remind you, if you weren't listening to us on the broadcast, you can go to KUSC.org and hear all of our witty banter and commentary. So much witty banter. There's, <laughs> it's incredible. But uh, you may also hear some Grieg in the background. Uh, but we wanted to especially talk to you real quick on the, the social media channels to say if you haven't yet become a member of the station, the station is able to play classical music 24 hours a day, seven days a week, thanks to listener support. So if you head on over to KUSC.org or if you're seeing this on your mobile device, just text the word KUSC to the number 41444. You can become a member that way. And don't worry, even though the music's ending, we're going to be okay. <laughs> it's going to be fine. The magic of radio. Here we go. Here we go. Because there's another song next. <laughs> See? <laughs> you can also tell uh, Siri or Google or whatever assistant that you use to dial 800 421 1717 and a friendly voice will take your information that way as well. Yep, super cool. We can't do it without you. So thanks so much for being involved. And uh, if you haven't yet, gotten involved please do so it's the next to last day of the drive so get in on it now and we will be back with you in 2019 take care thanks bye that was not a membership pitch by the way that was not me saying you have to go and become a member of kusc right now but if you want to that's totally fine <laughs> So like every other organization in 2020, uh, we started working from home. Uh, we uh, were able to take our portable broadcast kits. This is actually uh, me and Alan Chapman in our office on the very last day of the before times with our mobile studio kits uh, before we went home and thought we were coming back into work on Monday. And then we got a text from our supervisor on Sunday saying, no, Put your show on tape you're not coming in we are now in lockdown for the foreseeable future but we were able to make it work which was really cool and this is all thanks to the ingenuity of our staff at the station uh, we got a feature in the la times that's my face in the la times talking about working from home uh, this is a shot of my mobile studio which you're seeing another angle of it right now we're here on zoom and then we were even able to find a way to do membership drives from home which was really cool alan and i are on here at the same time in zoom with our producer kelsey recording what sounded like a normal pledge drive which was really amazing um, we made it work and we were able to do it for just about a year and a half before we then got to go back to the studio we are back in the studio now by the way i was there this morning bright and early. But now that we're sort of, you know, back to normal, um, we're still trying to figure out what that new normal is, but it's still just been an incredibly exciting time uh, for all of us at the station. Um, since starting at KUSC, I'm now the regular morning host. Uh, you can also hear me Saturday mornings. Um, I am also the host of the Sunday night opera show that's on at nine o'clock. Um, Let's see, I've gotten to do a live broadcast from LA Opera. I got to co-host that with John Van Driel. And I am now one of the pre-concert presenters for the LA Master Chorale, which is really, really cool. I've always gotten to work, uh, wanted to work with the Master Chorale. This is not exactly how I envisioned working with the Master Chorale, but it's still really, really neat. But these are just some highlights uh, there at Disney Hall, at the Hollywood Bowl, in the studio, and of course with my friends who I missed very, very much in our t-shirts with our names on them. <laughs> but that's that's me. So thank you all so much for paying, a, you know, taking this time and watching my silly little presentation. And um, I'd love to get questions from you if you have them. So I'm going to stop sharing.
stop sharing. Well, I'm going to I'm going to make a comment first. Thank you so much, Jennifer. That was very illuminating and um, inspiring. And I wanted to um, also add that um, in your role with the Master Corral, you get to do interviews. And I yeah. heard you interviewing, saw you interviewing Grant Gershon recently. And, you know, you're just awesome at that, too. So thank you. <laughs> blah, blah. Thank you. So, Andrew, I think maybe there are some um, written questions or that kind of thing. Yes, there are. Um, there is actually a comment from Larry Ballinger to you, Jennifer. I don't know if you're able to see that on. Oh, Zoom. I can. Yeah. And then he also wrote a question. So if you want to go ahead and read that question out loud and answer that. Sure. Larry says, uh, how do you pick your playlist? Well, OK, so um, the only playlist I actually get to pick 100 percent is my opera show. That's the only one that I am allowed to program completely on my own. Um, for my morning show, because it is so much content, we have a couple of really great music programmers who give us sort of the beginnings of a playlist. So we've got some things to work on. And then we've been given um, a lot of free reign to switch things out depending on what's going on during the day. If we feel like there's a piece of music that really ties in to an event. Like today is of course the 96th birthday of Queen Elizabeth II and this morning, I said, well, I would really love to feature a piece of British music that is from her time that, you know, has played during her reign. And so I was able to put in a piece of music by Eric Coates that was also used for um, a BBC program. Um, and it was great for me to share that and then also say, and on top of that, it's you know, the Queen's birthday today. So um, we try to keep those things in mind. Um, so the playlist is very malleable, I'll say, with that. Um, and Larry, also, thank you so much for your comment on my voice. I really appreciate that. Uh, and Larry also asked, what time do you have to start the morning show? Okay, so um, I get up at 3.30 every morning. Um, and I have to be, my show starts at 6 o'clock. So I usually get into the studio about 5.15. And that gives me enough opportunity to just sort of check and make sure that, you know, nothing technically has died overnight because there's always that worry. You get in and some computer has decided to stop working in the middle of the night and then I have to call an engineer really quick. Um, but then it also gives me an opportunity to check out, um, you know, what's happened overnight. Um, have any prominent musicians passed away? Have there been any awards handed out? Especially during like awards season, it's really great for us to check and see what you know what has won the Oscars. And of course, this year it was Hans Zimmer's score for Dune, which is really not super playable in KUSC. So I had to go and find something really quick that we could play that didn't break our format too much. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a long day. So uh, by the time we started this meeting, I had already been up for over 12 hours. <laughs> so um, any other questions? Yeah, Marilyn. Hi, uh, I wanted to let you know that there's some of us that listen to you in the mornings over in the wellness center, which is our gym. Oh, thank you. That's the exercise is to you. So anyway, I thought I would throw that out for others that may want to do the same thing. Uh, but I was also thinking about last Sunday for Easter, you sang Beethoven's Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And it was so gorgeous. The only problem was the recording did not have you mic'd, but it did not. <laughs> but I was wondering if this is too much to ask of you to, if you would be willing to just to sing a few phrases of it a cappella. Um, I, I could. Uh, the only thing with that is that it's really impressive with uh, Peter Green's accompaniment because the piano it. part on that is just to die for. It's so it, good. It is. It is. Um, I can try. I, I, I this people... is not really a singing microphone, but <laughs> I can try. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's in a mixed meter, so it's a little different. Um, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love, lights on fall. I see, and I can't remember the words, unfortunately. But yeah, if, if I can get a good recording of it, I will put it up somewhere. 
so that cute. everyone can see it. Yeah, unfortunately, they didn't have me mic'd for like the first third of the song. I know. And they haven't even, I don't, I haven't seen the service actually up on YouTube yet. I was trying oh, to find it. Oh, you it, have? Okay. No, it didn't come through. You can listen to Peter's piano on it because that was recorded, but your yeah. voice, they didn't have the mic on. So, yeah. We just adore having you sing. Thank You're, you. You are a wonderful uh, part of the the entire team, but also we just love your voice. Thank you, Marilyn. Appreciate it. Are there other questions or comments? Yeah. Uh, am I on my? Yes, yeah, you are. You. Uh huh. Bill. Yes. Uh, Jennifer, that this program was absolutely marvelous. Um, KUSC, my favorite station. And um, of course, uh, my wife, Polly, who is right here. Hello. Hello. Hi, Polly. And, <laughs> and I are also Trekkies and Star Wars yes. fans. <laughs> yes. And just uh, wondering, um, what do you do? as a fan of those programs, how do you express that? Um, oh gosh, so many ways. I mean, any any opportunity I can get to play music from either one of those franchises on KUSC, I do. I mean, typically when you hear the theme from Star Trek, the motion picture, that's probably me playing it because it's my favorite of all the Star Trek soundtracks. It is by far the best one, the original. Um, and the same with Star Wars, especially when we get to, you know, May the 4th, May the 4th be with you. I, I love to get some of that music on there when I can. Or if I see, um, like the other day, it was Ewan McGregor's birthday. So I found some music from the Star Wars prequels and I played that. Um, it, it's a way for me um, to express my personality on KUSC and a way to share this really incredible music that I don't think gets heard enough sometimes on the station um but then also on the other side in terms of you know being a fan of those franchises i love going to co the uh, conventions i try to go to star wars celebration i won't be there this weekend it's just too too crowded for me yet i'm not sure i'm ready to go back to conventions quite yet but um but my my husband is also a big fan of uh, star wars as well and we were actually able to integrate some of that into our wedding um, our entire wedding party had lightsabers and, uh, <laughs> for the, for the recessional, we used the throne room music from a new hope. And then our wedding party held up their lightsabers, like a bridge that we got to walk under. Oh, and, that's great. <laughs> and we, we didn't Wonderful. tell anyone. So it was a surprise. Uh, I mean, obviously our musicians knew, um, Peter and Lisa played our wedding, which was really fantastic, but, um, and and Pastor Jessica knew, but uh, none of our guests knew, so it was a nice big surprise for them. But uh, Bill, I appreciate you asking me that. That's it's really fun for me to talk about those things. <laughs> you, you've given us some of your history, and uh, it just as you were telling us about the circumstances that led you here and there and so forth. Um, we as uh, in in as pastors and so forth, uh, workers, church workers, we sense that we resonate with that because we've experienced the same thing just as you've described your experience. But we are grateful for your program today. It was just <laughs> outstanding and you're wonderful. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bro. And you also very that. loved to look at. I oh. remember as a young girl going to anything operatic and you they just didn't look like you at all. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just going to say you're a really a cutie pie. So Thank that you. would make me listen also. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell my mom that. She will appreciate okay. it too, since I look a lot like her. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> Let's see, Barbara has a question. Is there a most memorable experience since you've been on the air for KUSC that you'd like to share with us? Oh, wow. Um, I can, yes. So there was one morning where, um, when Jim Shveda was still at the station, he of course just recently retired um, after 43 years on the air. So it was a well-deserved retirement. I miss him very much, but I know he was 
looking forward to that retirement. Uh, but he used to ask in um, all of the Oscar nominated composers for interviews. Now, of course, since John Williams has been nominated, I think 54 times now for the Oscar for best score, he's only won three out of those 54. Um, he would come in, um, but he had yet to come in in my tenure at that point. So one morning I was, uh, I had just wrapped up my shift and I decided to hang around and I was sitting in the studio with Alan Chapman. Alan had just started his shift and Alan had his mic open and he's introducing a piece. And then I look through the window to the studio do main door and Jim comes walking in with John Williams. And I almost said something verbally with Alan's mic open and but I had to stop myself I said don't get excited don't be that person um so that that was one of those days where it was just oh my god I was like oh my gosh John Williams but I couldn't say it because his microphone was open um and then there have also been you know times where I've had you know probably less than stellar moments on the air such as trying to say names like Lisa Bati if I, see I'm gonna I'm gonna mess it up right now if I don't think hard about it Lisa Batia Shvili, Mirga Grazianita Tila, there's those names. Um, but there was one day I tried to say Lisa's name and um, I said it very wrong and I went, Ugh. and then I just went to the music. <laughs> and then so when it came out of the music, I made sure to say her name slowly and correctly. So you know, there's incidents like that too that have been, uh, you know, less than stellar. And then of course we've had, you know, very touching days such as um, when the actor Chadwick Boseman passed away a couple of years ago. He was the star of the Marvel Black Panther film um, and he had made such an impact not just in the comic book movie community but also for you know many young black Americans being able to see someone who looked like them starring in a superhero film and when he passed it was it was such a shock um, because it was so sudden. And so I had asked the programmers if I could play music from Black Panther the next day. And they said, absolutely. And it was very, um, it was hard for me emotionally to, to just sort of keep it contained when I, I did a little, um, just a little obituary for him before we played the music and what he had meant to me. And it was so, it was such an honor to be able to do that, to be able to speak to our audience and to share in the grief that they were feeling over his loss. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I think about it now and I get a little emotional, but it, it was really such a such an honor to be able to do that. Thank you so much, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. We are actually uh, a little over. Yeah, I just saw that. <laughs> And um, <clears throat> so I'm going to thank you again and assure you your honorarium will be on its way soon. Oh. <laughs> and um, thank you. Yes, I so treasure every time I get to hear you speak and certainly when I get to hear you sing. And so thank you very much for gracing us with this beauty today. Thank you, Jennifer. You're absolutely welcome. This was such a pleasure. Next week, uh, our own resident, Terry McGonigal, will be speaking um, on the church's response, uh, kind of church globally, response to the pandemic. And um, I encourage you to come and to invite friends to uh, join us because, you know, this is... Um, uh, a very strategic time in the lives of congregations and in the work of uh, God's rule and reign in the world. So Terry will be uh, an astute and articulate sp speaker next week. So blessings to you all. See you next week. Thanks.